What's up, my nigga? What did you just say? What's up, my nigga? Man, fuck you! Okay, y'all, so I just bought this house in July and I wanna paint, I need to paint. And so I've been looking for browns because I found this beautiful art piece. And I don't know, I just, I, I feel like it's giving me brown vibes. And so I was looking at these paint colors online and this, so this is Sable. These are all Sherwin-Williams. This is the only one that looks like it did online. This one, uh, polished mahogany is close. And then this one, like, I thought it was way more brown. It's a beautiful color, but I really want a brown. But I think I'm gonna go with this one, this one in certain light, it's just a little bit too cool. It looks a little bit too like shit, whereas this one is kind of like a, a chocolatey wine color. I don't know, what do you think? What's up, everybody? Wait, I have a microphone now. What's up, everybody? Oh, I love that. Happy Martin Luther King weekend. I'm gonna be living my best black life this weekend by not working on Monday and doing the things I love, which are the things that I do Anyway, I just have an extra day off now to do it. <laughs> I'm really excited to share that I invested in the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 creator combo. I have the microphone now. I've got the camera itself on a tripod. I was always just using my iPhone 15 Pro Max and it's great, but being able to just film myself and see myself framed on the screen on this device is so incredible and amazing. Admittedly, I've been really inspired by people who are just recording on their phones and creating compelling content without all the production. MKBHD's autofocus channel, where it's just like him and a phone chilling, is really inspiring to me. And so despite the fact that I, in my head, have been doing that and like want to do that, part of my OCD brain and perfectionist brain is like, you need better audio. I've wanted a microphone for a long time, specifically the DJI Mic 1 with the little case that comes with two, but I also wanted a separate camera to start blogging and podcasting and those sorts of things. And so buying the creator combo is just like a no brainer because it comes with a microphone. So you can hear me better now. I'm having one of those days where I feel really insecure. This isn't what the video is about, but like I woke up today and I was just like staring at myself in the mirror, like, oh my gosh, you're getting older. And then I started to like spiral and just feeling like, again, a lot of this stuff is superficial, but once, maybe twice a year, I get this way. And this isn't what the video is about by any means, but um, I just thought I would share and have a vulnerable moment. I took a little mushroom capsule. I'm feeling a little better. And just filming this this video here um, has helped. Also, the paint. <laughs> I'm like, went to Sherwin-Williams and the woman working the counter at Sherwin-Williams was like, I really love your outfit today. So that made me feel definitely better. But yeah, I'm just having one of those days. What? Um, ciao. Anyway, so. I know a lot of you are excited for the EV9 review. I've had it for a month now. I have 600 miles almost exactly on the odometer and I have so much to say. I know there are plenty of other reviews out there. Admittedly though, a lot of the reviews on the EV9 are not in the United States. So they're not necessarily US spec vehicles. I've seen one with um, out of spec where he does the range test, but I think it's gonna be really useful for you all to see how somebody who lives with it day to day is experiencing everything. And I can't wait to film that. I'm actually probably gonna film it on Monday because again, I have the day off. Stay tuned for that. Today's video is something that came about with the purchase of the EV9. I wanna talk about salespeople today. I wanted to speak on this because we often don't make really large purchases. You might buy a car once every couple of years. Some people keep their car car for a decade. I keep mine every three years. And if you're leasing, you're used to that also, but you know, you're not buying a car every day. You're not buying a house every day. You're not having children every day. It's one thing to go into Target and spend 50, 100 bucks on toilet paper because that's how much toilet paper is for like 12 rolls now. Just kidding, it's like 20, but still overpriced. But when I spend a lot of money on something, which doesn't happen, it's almost like you don't get the muscle memory of how to communicate with salespeople and what to expect because you're not doing it often. Unless you're Oprah and you're buying houses in an island or fucking Mark Zuckerberg who's building a, a multi, like nine figure, I think that's hundreds of millions of dollars, compound in Hawaii and suing 
the native Hawaiians to build this compound with an underground bunker and all that shit. You're not making these purchases every day. But I wanted to make this video for two reasons. One, I wanna help you as a consumer feel comfortable and confident to make really expensive or life-altering purchases. And I also wanna share some insight and give feedback to salespeople to be better salespeople. First, let me share a couple of sales experiences I've had in the last three months. First, buying the EV9. So I went to the dealership, talked to the sales guy, test drove the car, came back. He introduced me to somebody in finance. Finance person came in with like a very basic quote of the pricing and it was the cost of the car which was like 76,000 and then it had the EV credit the $7,500 or the lease credit but then underneath that they marked it up $7,500 on top of some other bullshit maintenance and blah 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 and so I looked at it and I go oh you added $7,500 to the price and he was like yeah yeah it alleviates the 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 lease credit and I go no I'm not gonna buy this car with a markup. I literally go, oh, you can keep that. <laughs> Straight up. You are not, like, I'm, I'm not paying more than MSRP is what I told him. And he, he, he kept trying to like justify like, well, no, that's, it's actually good for you because, you know, normally we would mark this up X amount, but because you have the lease credit, you're just paying, it's, it's flatline. I'm like, no, sweetie, I'm paying MSRP minus $7,500. Try it, let's try that. I'll, I'll like come back with something. And so he leaves, he comes back. It's, it's, he took off the 7,500, but it still has some extra stuff. And I was like, I was like, I'll leave. I was like, I don't need this car. I can just be carless. I was test driving the BMW iX also. It was a little bit more expensive, but they were having lease deals as well. I was fully committed to going back to BMW that day or just leaving and saying, fuck it. And so he leaves again, he comes back. It's the bare, like bare bones, MSRP dock fee, which it feels like it's required. Nothing else was added to it. Look good. The monthly payment still felt high, but because it didn't have the money factor or anything else, I was like, okay, this looks good. So they ran my credit, and then I went back to like the uh, like another finance department where they were like writing up the contract and getting the numbers. And when I looked and I saw everything listed out, it didn't all line up. I'm like, okay, well the MSRP on this final contract that I'm about to sign my life away for, it was like six grand higher than MSRP. They also didn't list the money factor anywhere. And so I was like, this still feels really high to me. Like what's going on? So she got her manager, the finance manager. And I was like, what's the money factor? And he told me it was like 0.003 something. And if you're like me and you did your research, you know that they were offering 0.00277 money factor if you have good credit and if you're doing a particular lease. And so my first piece of advice for you all watching is do your research. If you intend to buy a vehicle, find the forums online for your auto manufacturer. Kia EV forums has been the holy grail for me prior to buying the EV9 as well as currently. Meeting a lot of folks who recently purchased it, were able to communicate and talk about pricing and features and what's expected, what's not. That's really gonna give you the upper hand when you go in to buy a vehicle. There's a website called leasehacker.com where a bunch of people talk about how much they were offered from the finance department, what they're paying. Sometimes people also leak internal documentation from automakers with the money factor, the APR, all of the specials. So you can walk into the dealership and say, here's what I expect. You're not gonna charge me anymore because I literally have an internal document from your company. And that's literally exactly what I did at Kia. Again, I'm not gonna talk about the EV9 at all today, but this was the first instance of making a really large purchase and experiencing salespeople. And I wanted to share this with you because honestly, if I hadn't done my research, I would have paid at least $10,000 over MSRP without having haggling ability or an understanding of what other people were paying. And you don't have to be an expert in APR or financing or understand the lingo or the language, just talk to people who do understand it and ask them to break it down for you so you can walk into a dealership and say, here's how much I wanna pay per month, here's how much the car, here's how much you're gonna sell me the car for, nothing else. And when you start throwing around words like money factor and referencing other people's experiences, that's how you have the upper hand. The next sales experience I had recently had to do with insulation. So I recently purchased this house in Atlanta in July of 2023 and it was completely renovated, but there are just some, some little things that need to be done, like I need to paint. They painted the walls before they stained the floor, so the entire perimeter of the house has like a yellow hue to it because who fucking knows why? Hell no! Oh, <gasps> hell no! Oh, hell no! Uh -huh. Hell no! Baby boy, better get up. 
But overall, the house is great. But one thing that it doesn't have is underfloor insulation. And the room over here that houses the furnace, it peeks into the attic and they didn't insulate, like they didn't separate this room over here from the attic. So it's just like cold over here. And so I've gotten a few quotes from insulation specialists. One piece of advice for you as a consumer before I tell the story is get at least three quotes. If you are interested in painting, insulation, windows, door, whatever you wanna do for your home or anything really, any work, get three separate quotes. You should never settle for the first one. Ironically, in this case, I, I, my gut feeling told me to go with the first person, but I had already scheduled appointments and so I didn't. And here's what happened. So the first guy who came over, I just had a good feeling about him. Customer service was off the charts. So all of the insulation would need to be around the perimeter of the entire house under the, under the floor in the crawl space. The house is roughly 1500 square feet. He went under, he went under the house. Like he opened up the crawl space, went swimming in there for a couple minutes, taking pictures, getting readings, all of that. And I was like, oh shit, like he's in here. And it uh, turns out he used to actually install insulation and now he's in sales trying to make more money. I thought that was really cool. He also went into the attic. So I don't have a staircase that leads up to the attic. So he had a single, it wasn't an A-frame ladder. It was just like the single long, I don't know what it's called. Sorry, I'm gay. Just a straight ladder. So he like pushed it up, went up there without mask or cover, like all the fucking fiberglass that's up there. He didn't care. He just like went up there, did it. And then we chatted for a bit. We found each other on social media. We're both into cars. It just felt like a really good interaction. And then I got the quote from him and it seemed really affordable. I didn't have anything to compare it to, but it just felt, I don't know, everything about my interaction with him just felt really awesome. I should have just gone with him and I really wanted to, but I had another person scheduled the next day for the same thing. And so I'm like, well, let me get, again, taking my own advice, let me get at least two quotes. Not, I didn't get three, I just got two. The second guy that came over from a different company, he was very pompous and cocky and very know-it-all but he when i opened the door to the crawl space he didn't go inside at all he like took out his phone stayed on the outside just crouched down and just took a few photos and then he came in here to where the furnace was and he spent way more time in there just like i don't know just kind of talking shit about how the contractors did a bad job and just like da, da, da. and i'm like okay i mean not that he's not not that what he was saying was invalid but it just felt really icky and so unlike the other guy who was really friendly and not pushy he sits down, where, not where I'm sitting, but at the end of my island here, he sits down, opens up paperwork, starts asking me a bunch of questions like, how, how, would, you, how would you rate me today? I was like, oh, you were very informative and helpful. How would you rate the company? He was like hitting these things that he had to hit to basically get me to say like, yes, I like you. Yes, I like the company. Yes, I like that you're sustainable. So then he's like, okay, so here's sign. Not only did he quote me four times the amount of the first person, he also then got it down. By the time he left my house, it was half of what his original quote was because I kept saying no. I even got to a point where I was like, dude, for my own mental health, I just can't, sorry, I keep hitting the mic, I need to remember. I was like, dude, for my own mental health, I don't just say yes to everything because I'll lose sleep and it'll be like really fucked up for my mental. So like, there's nothing you can say that's gonna make me sign. He stuck around sitting next to me here for literally 15 minutes being really, really aggressive trying to get me to sign. I've never been so uncomfortable. I haven't been that uncomfortable in general, not as sales aside. I don't think I've been that uncomfortable with another human that I could recall in recent memory. I was this close to just saying, you need to get the fuck out of my house because you're being really aggressive and weird. But when it comes to home ownership stuff, it's weird because they know where you live. And I'm like, well, fuck, I don't want to like be rude to this fucking weird aggressive salesperson then he like comes back here right so the lesson if you're a consumer and you're listening to this lesson one if you can get a quote by if you can do it via facetime or photos via email something like that so people don't actually have to come over to your address i would highly recommend doing that a lot of these places ask for your address to see how it's zoned what materials all that kind of stuff so sometimes it's inevitable that they're gonna have your address, but at the very least, try and ask if you can do this over FaceTime or send photos or something like that so you don't actually have somebody in your house. If you do have a salesperson in your house and they are being creepy or aggressive, I mean, do what you have to do. I mean, <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia's an open carry state, you know what I'm saying? Realistically, if this happens, especially if you're alone, try to be as calm and considerate as you possibly can and just be really affirmed in yourself to say no. 
their job is to sell you something. They're, they're trying to get commission. It's fucking hard out here. People, companies are laying people off left and right. So I get that if you don't make a sale, you're gonna lose your job and your livelihood. But in this case, he lost a sale because he was fucking aggressive and rude. And so of course I'm gonna go with guy number one. And just a little side note about guy number one, because we found each other on social media and we're like keeping in touch, three or four days after he came over and gave me the quote, he was fired. He was fired. And I go, why? Were, why? I was like, I was like, I'm going with you. Like I literally want to purchase from you because you were personable and friendly and you weren't a fucking creep. He goes, I think I'm too nice to be in sales, which I understand he was really fucking nice. And usually sales tactics involve pressuring people to do something before they've had a chance to think about it and to sign. So that way it's just locked in, which I refuse to do in this case. So with this in the installation, if you are somebody who has trouble saying no, or you're a people pleaser, you should maybe have a friend come over. Or if you have a partner, have your partner lead or you lead, but just have your partner be there as backup so you're not agreeing to something that you don't feel confident doing because it's a lot of fucking money. Insulation isn't cheap. So again, consumer advice, anytime you're making a big purchase or a health care purchase, look at reviews in multiple sources. I do Google Maps and Yelp bare minimum. If there's another Better Business Bureau or another sort of online ratings system, hell, people use TikTok or Twitter to search for keywords to see if things come up. One of the Kia dealers in Atlanta, allegedly, there's like a whole community of TikTokers who are sharing about how that dealership is a scam, which admittedly I didn't know about until after I was in the purchasing process, but based on how that dealership was communicating with me, it was why I went to the other one where I purchased my car, which is Caliban if you were curious. Google Maps is one. I don't like to just stick to Google Maps. I like to make sure that the reviewers have more than like 10 reviews. If every review is just like one review, that looks a little sus to me. So I always compare Google Maps with Yelp. Yelp always feels more substantial and like it's been vetted more so than Google Maps. And so I like to compare. There was a dentist I went to in Los Angeles and for whatever reason, I just Googled it and they had stellar Google reviews. I went, she fucked up my teeth in numerous ways that I literally had just got fixed like three years later here in Atlanta, shout out to that dentist. And so after I did all that work, I checked Yelp after cause I didn't take my own advice back then and their reviews were abysmal. They were like, she fucked up my teeth. They overcharged me. They weren't transparent about pricing, da 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 da. And I was like, uh. <laughs> So advice, look up the reviews in multiple sources anytime you're going to purchase something. So these are my recent experiences with salespeople for large or significant life purchases. What can you do as the consumer? Never purchase large items in a rush unless it's an emergency. Like literally, take your fucking time. Do your research. Don't be afraid to say no. If you're alone, have somebody with you during the sales process. 95% of a salesperson's personality and shtick is to make you feel like you can't say no. Like in an era where we are consistently talking about consent, a lot of these pushy sales tactics feel really fucking gross because you're like violating my boundaries. So follow this advice and you will have a hopefully seamless purchase process. What's my advice for companies who are selling something? I really hope we can get to a place where you all rethink your strategy. I know that everyone is trying to come out on top and make the most money and you've got stockholders and share, shareholders and executives to, to appease and please. But in our world currently where people my age and younger especially, but everyone in every, in every realm is starting to hate capitalism and hate dishonesty, we don't wanna buy from you if you are doing wrong by civilians. I'm always going to empathize with the person who is personable and friendly and doesn't make me feel uncomfortable and safe. And if you violate my safety or my boundaries, I'm not gonna buy from you. And this has to come from the top down because if you're the salesperson who is about to get fired because they're not hitting their sales numbers and the only way you are taught to reach your sales numbers is to be aggressive, that's fucked up. You're in a toxic world. And I get it, sales is a hard job for this very reason. You can make a shit ton of money in sales, but oftentimes it's through tactics which allows you to take advantage of the consumer. So if you're watching this, you're now a smart consumer. Go buy a car, 
Go buy a house. Go buy 100 eSIMs and donate them to Gaza. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for letting me share. The EV9 video will be filmed in a day or two, and I can't wait to post that one. Oh my God, I've been filming for like 30 fucking minutes. I, if anyone has any advice for filming quick, concise videos, let me know. I recently downloaded a teleprompter app that I intended to use for this, but I didn't. I'm just kind of doing it all up in my head. So maybe that's why I ramble a bunch, but I need to figure out how to get these videos shorter because I know everyone's attention span is short as fuck. Okay, that's it for me. Um, actually, I wanted to ask, would anyone be interested in me doing like a house tour? Um, I also can do a tech tour. Like I have my Eufy doorbell charging next to me. I've got an Ecobee. I've got this projector over here and just like a bunch of fun things. If you want me to do a house tour, let me know. That maybe will be the video after the EV9 review. But um, okay, love you, bye. Happy MLK weekend. Blacks, love you.